We're now speaking with Laverne Spencer, the premier female high jumper on St. Lucia, a Caribbean record holder, and in fact, one of the big hopes for St. Lucia, the flag bearer, in fact, from the just concluded opening ceremony of the 30th Olympiad here in London. East London, remind you, Stratford and the Olympic Village. Laverne Donalyn Spencer. Tell us, Laverne, the very important for you. You have done several games before. What's the feeling at this point at this Olympic Games? Um, like I said, it's a great feeling, um, you know, not too many athletes get to represent the country at the Olympic Games and it's my second one. Um, I know I've worked hard, so hopefully at this second Olympic Games, my hard work can, you know, can show and can pay off in the qualifications and hopefully make it to the finals. You've had a long career, you're very young but have had a long career so far. Tell us the approach at this stage to competition. you jumping in a few days time. What is the approach in your camp towards the actual competition? Um, it's just normal, you know, I try to stay relaxed, focused and continue my training sessions as normal and just go out there and give my best on the day of competition. And you've had the balancing act, especially this year, of balancing competition and actual training. How has that been handled this year? I think this year was totally different to all my other years. Like you said, this year I didn't do too many competitions. The main focus was just on training and getting ready for the Olympics. I did a few competitions. Um, most of them, the weather wasn't too good. The, it was cold, rainy, and I got a few where it was sunny, and I was able to at least do 191 for the season, which is Reasonably good, just one centimeter short from the B standard of the Olympic um, standard. So I think pretty much everything is, I think I'm still in shape regardless of how I perform when it's not cold, but I think I'm ready for the qualifications. Let's talk a little bit now, Levin Spencer, about last night. We Speaking to you the day here in the Olympic Village, the day after you carried that Senusha flag at the London Olympics. Tell us about the experience. Um, first of all, I think it was... Um, you know, I was just excited and thrilled to know that, okay, I was selected to be the flag bearer for St. Lucia. Um, you know, most people would say it's once in a lifetime opportunity. Well, maybe I could say it's twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you carried it in Beijing and here in London. Yeah, so that, that was a great feeling and I think it's an honor as well. So I think I just want to, you know, thank... SLOC or whoever that was responsible for choosing the flag bearer to see it fitting to allow me to carry the flag, you know, a second time for the country and just being, you know, the leader representing the team carrying the flag. And I think, you know, just walking into the stadium, all the energy and excitement, I think it was a great feeling and just seeing the kids along the way and their enthusiasm supporting every, every team that passed along was, was really you know, awesome to see. Tell us a little bit about this experience here in this Olympic Village. You've been to many games before. Here you are in London. How are the games so far, and particularly the conditions and experience in the village? In the village, um, for me, not much to say. Um, I just, I don't do much. I don't go out much. I just probably go to the dining hall, go to training. I've been around a couple of times, but it's not, you know, Going to Beijing and comparing it to Beijing, I would say, you know, Beijing, Beijing passed it. Beijing was much better, but you know, I think it's okay. I mean, nothing much to shout about, but the main focus is not necessarily the village, but, you know, trying to stay focused and get ready for competition. And there's an, a psychological aspect to that. As you say, your competitors, one of your American competitors, Beard, I think, with Beard was teasing me yesterday that she so loves you as a friend, but she wouldn't be allowing you to beat her. What has that been like with your friends and rivals as you meet them around the village? Um, friends, you know, if they are your friends, friends are forever. I mean, seeing them in the village, walking around, yeah, you talk to them, but on the day of competitions, mm -hmm. no one has friends. And after competition, then, yeah, we go back to talking and... But on the day of competition, everyone focus on what they have to do. And afterwards, we talk again. And your rapport with some of your teammates, how has that been? I've been struck by your rapport with young Daniel Bobra. Obviously, you more experienced than her in games and seniority, though a different discipline. How has that helped, that kind of rapport, you think? You've, she's benefited from you being senior and, in fact, the support for each other? I think having um, experienced athletes around, maybe less experienced athletes, well, 
she was in Beijing as well, so I wouldn't want to say lesser experience, but I think, you know, just talking to her and, you know, if they're nervous, then you know what to say to, to let them know that, okay, no need to be nervous, no need to worry, just go out there, give up your best. If you give your best, then I think, you know, your best will be good enough. So I think just being with other athletes and encouraging them is is a good thing as well as the team. And so tell us, Laverne, as you say, going to your height, is there any specific area in the training and so on that, that you will be focusing on? I know athletes are always keen to practice, yes, to train, but not to get to tighten up and not to strenuous before. So w w where will it be, the balance for you? In competition, it's totally different. Competition, I'm not going to think about anything I had to practice on um, during practice sessions because when you think of too many things, everything doesn't work out properly. You think of one thing, something else happened, and then you have to think of something else. So I think on the day of competition, you just go there and compete. But for training, yeah, we focus on probably like the main thing I always say is maybe my arching over the bar was the main problem and my approach. So we just, tr right now what we're trying to do is just put everything together, make everything, th make everything through, and then we'll see how it comes through together for the competition. Lavoon Spencer, you've had a wonderful career, certainly a lot of renown in your country and lots of goodwill that you're enjoying. How do you see it now as you look beyond uh, inspired and animated, excited about this track and field career or starting to look at beyond it? How does it feel for you? How much fire is there still? Or are you going to take it one step, one Olympics at a time? Well, you said it right. I always say, you know, you take it one step at a time. You don't know what the future holds. So first of all, you know, I will look forward to this Olympic. And after this, then, I will start thinking about what the future holds for me. You've always been very thankful for the gift that you've been possessed with. Tell us, uh, Laverne Spencer, what inspires her, basically, particularly at this stage of your career. You always speak of your faith and other m methods and modes of inspiration and support. Tell us what makes this Laverne Spencer tick. Like always, I think probably the whole ascension knows already. My motto and my theme, God plus hard work and discipline equals success and it has worked for me and I know it could work for other people as well so I think everyone knows my motto from now on. <laughs> And just the inclination, you made a good point about not thinking about too much, the heights and, and so that you've had earlier in the year, is that all going to be blanked out as you go towards the competition? This is a totally different competition, it's a different atmosphere, it's a different climate, everything is just different so we could never go back and think about how you perform at previous competitions. Everything is different. You have to just go into this competition, thinking positive, think of a new competition, and just go out there and jump. One very important point, you, have, you and your supporters have clamored for a long time for the big ingredient to have your coach over the competitions. Many solutions have lamented you have often alone over Europe in major competitions. You have your coach Wolfgang here. Tell us of the difference that makes that your coach from Germany is in fact here at the Games with you. I think it's good. Um, like I said before, majority of top athletes always come with the coach. And I mean, it's not like because they come with the coach, you expect me to come. But I think if you have a top athlete in a prestigious competition like the Olympics, I'm expected to have your coach there with you. And having your coach there with you at competition is one less thing to worry about. I, I think if your coach there with you at competition, you don't have to worry about, you know, the errors made when you compete. I think the focus should just be on jumping and then the coach should take care of the rest. It also helps the confidence, of course. Pardon? It also helps the confidence. Definitely. Thank you, Laverne Donald and Spencer. Your final word to all St. Lucia who will be viewing this in a few hours. Um, I just want to thank all the St. Lucians who have supported me throughout the year. The encouragement. And don't worry, I'm going to give up my best. I will try to make it to the finals and then from the finals I take it from there and see how it goes but I will gladly represent St. Lucia proudly. So thank you very much and 